We're joined on today's talk back by Republican State Representative Matt Gibson, who represents District 88. That includes East Otaga County and West Del Mar County. And he's here to take your questions now. Just call the number on your uh, call the number on your screen, 1-800-504-4084 or 420-TALK. And please pick up that phone. We want to hear from you. And thank you so much, Representative, for joining thank us you today. Me. Pleasure to have you on. Now, if re-elected this year, we talked before, this would be your fifth term that is uh, correct. in office. Yes, ma'am. What keeps you coming back for more year after year? Well, uh, I had planned earlier not to come back, but circumstances kind of changed, and uh, I couldn't find anyone to take the place, I guess you would say. And then I got to realizing that, whoa, we're going into a quadrennium where we redraw the districts, and that's so important. Uh, in 2001, when we redraw it after the last decimal census, I really wasn't too up to date on what I was doing. This time, I know, and there's some changes that need to be made. Otago needs to be a standalone district. Elmore County needs more than one resident representative, which they now have only one out of six. So there's a lot of work that needs to be done when we redraw those House lines, Senate lines, and also the congressional lines. Real important uh, quadrennium. Now, uh, switching gears a little bit, I know that unemployment is such a big issue, and especially for right here in Alabama yes, and in that district. Um, what what would you do if reelected? What would you do to address that issue uh, and bring businesses to that area? Well, we have done a whole lot already in bringing uh, retail jobs. It seems like both communities, Prattville and Millbrook's direction, has turned to retail rather than the heavy manufacturing. We welcome any businesses, of course, that want to come. We have some nice business parks uh, and uh, industrial parks up 31. We have a rural one. We have two in Prattville. Millbrook t tends to lean more toward the retail trade. So we're growing retail over there. We're quite a shopping uh, venue for the uh, North Re River region area. And uh, that brings jobs, too. You know, all those stores have got people working in them, and we've got some brand-new uh, venue up there in High Point that uh, got a lot of room for some new mom and pop type stores and we've got the big boxes in and all we need to do is fill those up. Sure. Let's take a, a caller at this time. We have some callers standing by. Caller, go ahead with your question for Representative Gibson. Uh, Representative Gibson, I was just, I uh, have a question. Back in uh, 2008, right after y'all uh, uh, voted yourself the two, the 62% pay raise, and you were against your party's uh, wishes for the stimulus, the $600 per family stimulus money. And you said, well, if they're going to get it anyway, I would suggest they spend it on beer and uh, prostitutes. Your comment towards that? I don't, I didn't fully understand the question. I did the one pertaining to the pay raise, which was in 2007, in the first uh, session of the Quadrennium. And I did vote for that. I did some serious thinking about that because I realized that it was not a pay raise, it was an increase in the expense allowance. The pay is set by the 1901 Constitution at $10 a day, the same way that we get 10 cents a mile. When, we, when I come in for session, I get $2.40 for the whole 105 calendar days that we're in session. And I knew it was not enough money to run your district, to come to Montgomery the 105 calendar days. Not for me, I'm close, but for the all 139 other legislators, it gets rather expensive. So I know what I spend to operate in my district. You don't know how many requests you get for contributions. Uh, I just got one recently for a lady that wants to go to, a young lady who wants to go to Brazil, trained to be a s Olympic soccer player when she needs money to go there. So I send her money for that, send money to Grace Place Pregnancy Center. There are a lot of places that you get requests for when you're once elected 
that you need additional money to go. And so, yes, I did vote for that increase. Now, on, I'm, I'm not sure about that latter part of the of the question uh, on stimulus money. We uh, we had none, the only stimulus money I'm aware of is the federal stimulus money. For all those voters out there who may or may not be familiar with you, tell us a little bit about your background and why you decided that this was the time to get into this race. Well, I've been living in Prattville for 30 years. I met my wife when she was stationed out at Maxwell. We settled down in Prattville. Um, I was a banker at the time, and the financial institution sent me to law school here. I went to law school at Jones, and uh, about 18, 19 years ago, I decided to practice law mm -hmm. and doing the same thing I did in the banking. I got involved with politics. Um, I ran for uh, city council, and on the last day of qualifying, I got 38 percent of the vote. The GOP, uh, some of the uh, parties that uh, approached me about running in this particular race, and I got in it. At that time, Mr. Gibson was not going to run in the race, and uh, he later changed his mind. I basically am running because I thought I could do a better job. I thought I, could, I would vote Republican. The contrast between me and Mr. Gibson, as he reiterated last night, is that he's running for his fifth term because he couldn't find anybody to run in that position. Mm -hmm. My position is basically that's the seat that belongs to the people of District 88. And last time I looked at the Constitution, the people decide. So I am running with that attitude that let the people decide. Let's talk about uh, the politics now, whether it's in Montgomery or the nation's capital. It's very bitter. It seems to me like once upon a time you could be a Democrat, you could be a Republican, have dinner afterwards and have your differences th during the day, but now it seems like there's so much bitterness personally on both sides. If you make it and win this election and move on to the House, how do you deal with that and how do you work with your opponents on the other side? Well, first of all, I think I, you, have to be a, you have to be a uniter rather than a divider. Uh, there's a lot of differences. As, as we say in our profession, we can agree to disagree. So there is some disagreements, but we have to respect the other person's point of view. Uh, in Otago County or District 88, that is going on also at the local level. We need to bring the different areas together, such as Prattville, uh, Pine Level, Millbrook, Casada. We've got to work together in reference to solving issues because one particular entity cannot solve all the problems. Let's go to the phone lines and callers are standing by. Caller, go ahead with your question on today's talkback. Thank you for having me. I know that your opponent, Mr. Gibson, actually voted in favor of a pay raise and then took the pay raise. If you were faced with the same scenario, what would you do? Would you vote against it or for it? Thank you. I would vote against it. First of all, 62% pay raise. One of my issues is fiscal responsibility. We were going into proration. When was the last time you got an $18,840 pay raise? And then basically with an adjustive living uh, tied to the consumer price index, which basically means you've got a $20,000 increase. To me, that was irresponsible mm -hmm. due to the fact that our children in schools are, don't have the proper necessities as far as uh, utensils or uh, napkins, toilet paper, things of this nature. Teachers are going out buying school supplies. In the whole scheme of things, it comes down to leadership and character. And we should look at that in reference to our, our political leaders. What's the expression? Leadership and character is not what you're born with, it's something that you learn, but it's the pursuit of excellence, and that's what we need from our politicians. Let's try to get one more phone call in if we can. Caller, go ahead with your question. Yes, what is your stance on the gambling issue? My stance on the gambling issue, right now it is against the law. As an attorney, I look at it as it is against the law. I would favor legislation to a degree to let the people vote on it if it could come out that basically it was not so many people's fingers were in, in the pie. My point of it is, is you can't turn that much money to a few people. If the state of Alabama ran it completely, and I mean completely, not turn it over, not have it, a commission on it, then at that time that basically is across the board. Kind of like what we do with the ABC boards. We control the alcohol, and that's the same thing. But I'm not in favor of turning it over to a few people.